Uh, dear Earthmates, uh, in this episode of Earth uh, Civilization Dialogues, we are visiting Tanya Tuma, uh, who is the president of uh, Slovenia uh, Pen Center. Uh, she's also a leading novelist and a publisher. Always busy, active, and uh, very fruitful. And uh, she's also busy with the Peace Committee. And uh, anyone can. <laughs> Women Writers Committee. <laughs> but also. With... For many years. Yes. 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 Women Writers, but also, uh, you know, by your nature, you're also interested in peace <laughs> issues. And yes. uh, dear Tanya Tuma, uh, how come you fell in love with literature? How did that start in your journey? Well, maybe all my loves first start with, um, how shall I say, negation, you know, loving something per negationem. So my love started actually that I didn't want to read. I was like uh, six years old and um, um, in the primary school. And I, and I found all the words that uh, they made me read horrible and terrible and uh, frightening. Like we had the words like pioneer, you know, it's pioneer, but it was, it had a special meaning. And I was like um, angrily jumping around the room shouting that I'm not going to read this word through, word through. And my father had a lot of patience. Every evening, every afternoon, he sat with me for an hour, explaining me, supporting me. And then, I don't know, after a few years, uh, everything, everything came together. And uh, I, I started to, to read uh, first children books, etc. And particularly towards the end, uh, when I was around 15, in my teenage, I fell in love with the historical novels. And of course, the, the, the historical novel of the novels is Tolstoy's War and Peace. I'm still a great fan of Tolstoy's. I can, I mean, his uh, phrases, uh, his, uh, for example, his novel Resurrection, with uh, all the characters, with this uh, Maslova woman who, who abstains from getting comfortably away just because of her pride and self-respect. I love that kind of stuff. So later on, I started to read a lot and avidly. And uh, after finishing my grammar school, um, I was um, hesitating between studying uh, medicine to become a medical doctor or going to study literatures, uh, foreign languages and literatures, French, English, and German. And I, I ended up with, with languages and literatures. So <laughs> here I am. And then my first, of course, uh, books were something as a, like a passion, really. And uh, in very soon, I got um, I got hired by uh, a publishing company as an editor, uh, and then later I worked for big publishing companies like Oxford University Press, uh, Langenscheid Verlag. For so I I really had a long path in publishing for thirty years almost. Um, after a couple of years with all these big companies, I started my own business and published nearly 400 titles over 20 years. Then wow. it was time to write them. <laughs> so that's my love, <laughs> a very long love. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Uh, uh, editorship, I think, is mm -hmm. more difficult and uh, than many people think. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I'm sure most people, including myself, don't know much about edit editorship, although I try to edit a few books. Uh, but I think, uh, do you find yourself in trouble sometimes as an editor who is also a creative writer, editing somebody mm -hmm. else's work? To mm -hmm. what extent 
do you allow yourself? I mean, an idea may come to my to your mind and to put it or not to put it or to what? How do you define yeah. it? It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. troubling, isn't it? Tariq, you're absolutely right. So I separated my life, actually. While I was editing, I wasn't writing, at least not writing or publishing. I realized that I cannot be both. It would, it would be a terrible conflict of interest. You have your own way of expressing things, of putting, arranging characters, arranging what they do, how they, how they you know, what's their destiny and their, uh, let's say, life ex experience and uh, life philosophy. So you cannot do both. In my point of view, you cannot, or you're not really honest with it. I, I, I think that it's very difficult. And when I was, uh, let's say 10 years ago, I started to write novels and I closed my company. I actually, um, you, you could say I burned bridges behind me, but yes, I did that because I thought this was the most, I mean, I still edit here things like that, that are not in conflict with me, but just for, for fun or to help out friends, not really to, not professionally. Um, why? Uh, well, it was really, it, when I started to write, the editor in my head was a trouble because it was a, a bit of a censor, you know? How would, the, I mean, I was always on the other end. So, and I was always thinking as editor, uh, how will a reader um, understand this? How will take it, how will he or she take it in? Um, is it uh, good enough? Uh, how shall blah, blah, blah. So I was on the other end. And now I came to this end, writing, creating. And I was sometimes really, I realized that I'm thinking of how to write to please people. So I, I needed a while to, to, to end with this. I mean, I still think of a reader when I write it, write books. My books are very communicative. They're not uh, hermetic or uh, postmodern, confused so that you don't know what's what. No, they're very clear. But uh, I'm trying to get rid of the editor in my head <laughs> because it's a nuisance. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, we, we need to have a multiple personality disorder, I think. Yes, uh, yeah, true. You no, know, when uh, one aspect, one personality of ours is in action, the other, that personality shouldn't mm -hmm. be aware of the other personalities in a way. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's like, uh, I mean, with every character, you live a bit. You cannot, I write novels, and these characters that I create from, well, from fiction, of from, from, sometimes I think of real people, but not very often, uh, you actually live with them. You, you cannot ignore, um, and you have sometimes, for example, I had a character who was uh, a torturer during World War II. I'm not a torturer, believe me. I mean, I cannot harm a, an ant, you would say. But I had to, I had to get into the head of this terrible evil man, and I had to describe what he does in a way, not explicitly, but in a way that people would get really horrified by what happened. And why he became such a torture? What triggered his, uh, let's say, actions? So sometimes it's really, really difficult. But I mean, we leave a bit of us in everything we write, don't we? It's a trace. <laughs> it, it is true. Yes, that's true. Um, I, I would like to listen to you more on your writing, uh, but. Uh, a little parenthesis, uh, please. Uh, you're also an activist as a, as a yes. and member and uh, president of uh, Slovenian Pen Center. Uh, how about your activism? Uh, yeah. I mean, even as a publisher, I realized in Slovenia, the, the let's say the gender balance between women writers and poets, and men writers and poets was very was very poor was very unequal. I mean, um, so 
anyway, uh, as a publisher, I published a huge anthology of all Slovenian poetesses. And it was a breakthrough work actually, because the first book that uh, included poems and uh, biographies of uh, poetesses from the 19th century on, the beginning of 19th century on, it was like a revelation, not only for women, also for men, also for poets. They all of a sudden they said, oh, these are our roots. This is half the picture was missing for so long. So it was a huge bestseller. I mean, you cannot imagine a, po a poetic anthology to be a bestseller, but it was. Wonderful. So I, my activism started with women's rights, basically, and also children's rights. I was quite annoyed when I realized that, I mean, that children are treated as a lesser, as a lesser human beings, they are not. I mean, they are extremely clever and intelligent. If you can imagine what they do in the first years of their lives, we never progress with such speed. I mean, I have children of my own, so I could, I could see this in person. Uh, so activism started with women and children, women's rights, and then continued with uh, Slovenian pen, also with other groups. I mean. Uh, of course, LBTG community in Slovenia uh, has some very notorious and very good writers and poets as well. But they are they lived for many, many years in a parallel universe. I don't know what if you understand what I mean. They were just not part of our canon, literary canon. They just existed there somewhere. Um, but as I try at Penn, I tried to include them. So we, for the first time, I think in history of uh, Slovenian Penn, we, uh, we accepted several members of the community into our rows, so as members, and they're very active and uh, very, very, actually one of them is leading a very nice promotion as we speak about mother, it's mother tongue day today, so. <laughs> Yes, so uh, I mean, they are really amazing people. And of course, if you live a bit on the on the border or maybe, you know, you, you perceive things that we border. don't, that we don't sometimes. Yeah, so, I, I am kind of a borderline uh, myself. All uh, right. Uh, yes. So you understand what I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, my mother brought me up, so I have great respect for mothers uh, who uh, bring up their children uh, and uh, at one on one uh, eighth of March I was speaking to a group and I said uh, mm -hmm. with your permission I am from now on I want to consider myself an honorary woman and sorry, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> this doesn't want to. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll shut it up. I don't know what to do with it. Sorry. <laughs> Can you cut it out? No? Uh, no, problem. no problem. Yeah, I can. Yeah. No problem. OK. Yes, please do. OK. Uh, um, uh, yes. and. Uh, How about uh, the Yugoslavian era and uh, post-Yugoslavian mm -hmm. era? Uh, right, yeah, what? and Slovenian era. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Yugoslavia was, um, was a state that many people from the East, from behind the, the real Iron Curtain, considered as a successful form of socialism. We were not uh, closed like the Czechs or the, the Poles and other nations who were under Soviet reign. We were, it was more relaxed, let's say, but no freedom of speech. If you said something wrong, you could have ended in, in a gulag, basically. Unfortunately, also Yugoslavia uh, had uh, an island that was, uh, it, it's called um, 
Goli Otok, it means um, desert island in a way, because it's only rocks in the Mediterranean. And uh, the, the torrents around this, the currents around this island are so strong that you cannot swim to shore, although you see it. It's, it was really, so many, many opponents of the regime, of the communist regime were brought there and suffered and it was really, really bad. Uh, but if you kept away from politics, you could live a, a kind of life. Uh, as children, we were really, let's say, impregnated with this uh, communist ideology. We, for example, and Tito, Tito was the big hero. Tito was a huge personality in our story. So every, uh, every May, it was in May, we, we, we would have, uh, as an assignment, we would have to write a letter to Tito. And I mean, we believed all these stories. It's, it's, uh, it's terrible today, but I mean, people believe in all kinds of, kind, in, in gods, people, people believe in uh, biblical stories. We believed in Tito's stories. Some did, some, I mean, I, I, re I remember my time when I still believed uh, but later on, when I started to study and I read other things, I realized this is not this is not um, a fair society. So Yugoslavia was one party system, communist regime, very harsh for the opponents of the regime, etc. And then, of course, when in the 90s, when, first when the Berlin Wall fell down, we hoped for a better life, not in terms of materialism, but also in terms of freedoms. And uh, democracy was there in, in, in the 1990, the first uh, political parties other than communist party were formed and uh, other politicians came to, to talk to people and to be elected. So things, we had a lot of hopes and uh, I think it went really, really well for Slovenia. This conflict with the Yugoslav army was rather short. It was only two weeks, more or less, of the fights. So not many people died and uh, we somehow got away. They were more interested in other parts of Yugoslavia to occupy and to, you know, Bosnia and Croatia, etc. So they left. Actually, the Yugoslav army left in 91 in autumn, the last soldier was gone from Slovenian soil. This is good, this is wonderful. And then we started to build the story of a new country. It was really um, a story, David against Goliath, you know, Slovenia against the whole, this machinery of Yugoslavia. And I think we've been quite successful still. All the hum all human rights that we um, that we were uh, all of a sudden acquired could have and uh, worshipped. If you think of Europe today, how many of these rights are actually being um, uh, harshly, how shall I say, uh, disrespected? You know what I mean. I mean, like. Uh, is somebody who's born in, uh, I don't know, Turkey or Bangladesh, why don't, why can't these people come to Europe normally? Why do they have to cross borders illegally to, to, to swim over the rivers? And there was an incident in, in December last year uh, when a little girl from uh, Turkey, she was Kurdish, uh, dr uh, drowned. Uh, she was deaf. So she couldn't hear what her mom was crying to her and she got drowned a 10 year old. So I'm, I mean, we are all very disappointed actually. And we are disappointed with Europe too because it's a problem that's been here for 30 years. It's not like yesterday that somebody started to come to Europe. Uh, I, think, I think we should be able to talk about it openly we should respect every human rights of all the people in the world, not only Europeans, you know, everybody's got the same rights. So when we respect all the people, then we can also build uh, a sane and healthy democracies. 
without this, we, I don't know how we'll end up, but this is not good. And uh, you can see that threats are, are uh, emerging from everywhere. Now this uh, Eastern front, whatever, <laughs> it looks like it doesn't look nice, right? So I think, um, I think uh, the, Slovenia has made a lot of progress, uh, our standard of living, our cultural life, and we are very involved with Europe. And also these two years of uh, right-wing government and some rights, I mean, they will come back, I'm pretty sure. We still have our constitution, we still have, all things are in place, let's say. So we can amend all those um, measures, you know, in every countries now, uh, in all the countries now, measures against COVID were taken. And those measures, of course, uh, also neglected the human rights, but this will come back, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I hope so too. Yes. And um, you mentioned uh, that uh, at weekends you focused on writing your novel. And uh, uh, how do you, uh, what's the process you prefer? Or, uh, I mean, how do you start writing a novel? Or, I don't know how to ask. I'm not a novelist, so I don't know the questions. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's uh, when you have an idea, sometimes it happens like, um, without you wanting it. I mean, it, it gets into your head and doesn't leave you. For example, some years ago uh, in Slovenia, the debate started about uh, the civil war because during the World War II, we also had fights among the home guards and the partisans. So there were two sides. One was, um, was uh, let's say collaborating with the occupying forces, Nazis and Italians, and the other was were partisans. So after the war, the partisans got huge revenge and almost, I think about 12,000 home guard boys, actually boys and men and young men were killed, unarmed. It, it's a horrible war crime. And it's happened, such war crimes happened in, almost all, all the countries in Europe. After the war, there was a nearly a decade of uh, a lot of violence. And that's what we forget when things get serious, like now with Ukraine, I mean, war brings only bad things. There's nothing good in it. There's nothing positive for anybody, actually, not even for the people who think they would profit. They don't in the end. Anyway, what I was, the, the idea for a novel came to me during uh, a round table about these matters. And there was one person, one man who said, because he was a descendant of a home guard, he said, oh, everywhere I go in Slovenia, I feel like a traitor. And somebody else who was actually, and there were men in their nearly 60s. And the other one said, well, then I can feel like a son of a murderer. And I said, God. This is not, this is impossible. We cannot live like this. And I started to think about actually the, the, the story of uh, siblings, a sister and a brother who got involved into different blah, blah. It, it came to my head on the way home <laughs> in the car. And then you start building around it, of course. There, there's, there's one thing that you want to say, and then you start, and you have to bring the reader very carefully. <laughs> you shouldn't be, you know, it's not like a lesson. It should be interesting and it should be also in depth thinking of how a person can solve something and something not. But basically I wrote a novel that's about, uh, that, that was quite in Slovenia, quite notorious. It's even called white and red cherries. So white, like home guards, red, like partisans. And uh, it was quite popular. It still is. <laughs> People still read it. Um, how about stage or film adaptations of your novels? Uh, any attempts in that regard? I haven't, tr I haven't done anything on my own. For this white and red cherries, there was some, there was some interest. But then they didn't proceed. I, you know, it's um, 
it's probably it should be somebody else really i don't know i i i'm not a screen uh, writer i think uh, i should uh, i haven't tried anyway uh, i'm sure uh, a film company or a theater will come up and uh, yeah somebody should really feel the content that it's worthwhile and uh, and transform it into drama language, <laughs> into dialogues and into, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, I, I mean, theater, not everything is adaptable to theater. Novels are usually very long. Also my novels are usually long. So you have to either pick out a scene or, yeah, drama is something else in my point of view. So I, I, I have done a few uh, stage adaptations mm -hmm. based on mm -hmm. that, and, uh, and? so uh, they have been successful, honestly. But because I haven't been faithful to the novel so much, yeah, I, I yeah, you have to, yeah, take uh, you take whatever mm -hmm. is essential for the stage, etc., then rebuild it. Uh, uh, yeah. so it's a reflection of the novel. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those who yeah. want to be too faithful, uh, yeah, uh, then the, the play collapses. Yeah, uh, and it's lo very long at the moment. This is a fashion in Slovenia. They adapt all the possible novels. And I mean, on the plays are like something like four to five hours long. Oh, that's I'm sorry, that's but yeah, if you sit in a theater with your mask on because it's still pandemic, etc. So, I mean, it's like exhausting. I wouldn't, uh, I oh, think it's a torture. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, um, what would you recommend uh, to aspiring uh, young uh, writers uh... yeah well first not to give up second get involved with uh, uh, let's say professional associations it can be writers association pen we all need a good hand to help but it can, we can also help the young people to get published to get promoted to 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 be like to read loud uh, to get into various uh, competitions. Slovene Pen, and that was one of my ideas years ago. We are, uh, we have uh, an essay competition for secondary schools. These are, uh, let, well, teenagers from 15 to 19. And they would write essays on a certain topic like uh, internet trolling. We got some very interesting texts or last year it was freedom. Uh, it was future of freedom. Again, I mean, young people can really think when they get to it, they can, they have their own vision of, uh, of life. Uh, and I, and we learn a lot from them. That's also another thing. We learn a lot from them. So this year we challenged them with uh, Bosnia and the conflicts and wars. And I'm looking forward to the essays. They will come in the middle of uh, April. Then we, I mean, there's a jury of three of us. We read them all, we evaluate them and uh, reward uh, four of them for, because it's the category also one first and second year and third and fourth year. I mean, 15 and 19, it's we don't we we made two categories so that it's easier and some essays are really really good and some young people from this pool of our young essayists they break through they start to write uh they get into uh, for example our last year winner there was a huge interview with her in the major newspaper about her writing her ideas so we help them. I think we do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Very, very um, encouraging indeed. Um, you mentioned the future of freedom and the, uh, 
another vital concept, of course. Uh, and, and Earth civilization is building up uh, mm -hmm. uh, because people are more and more people are aware of the limitations, limits mm -hmm. of our planet, mm -hmm. and the importance of synergy. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what what are your wishes uh, about the future? Um, uh, the near future, I wish that we the, the, the war in Ukraine would stop. It, it goes on from 2014 and it's always it's like a, a, a powder keg we are sitting on. And I think the same powder keg is true for Bosnia. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I hope that this um, issues will be solved uh, diplomatically and politically. I think they are solvable. And I think we should realize that nothing good can come of a, of a true war in Europe or anywhere else. We see anywhere else, Syria, we have a Syrian icon guest at the moment, a young woman here. And I mean, the story she tells, it's like, I mean, hair raising, it's terrible. It's really awful. Uh, uh, I, so I, I would like to meet her, by the way. I'll be happy. Yes, well, if you, she'll be with us at Blit. She's uh, uh, she's uh, also a playwright. Would you help? Playwright and poet. Get in touch. Would you help me get in touch with her, please? Can you can you speak Arabic, Tariq? But, uh, no, unfortunately. She speaks Arabic. Only. She's uh, her English is so so. But still, so so is good. Yeah. Okay. I'll put you in touch. She'll Thank be glad. I'm, I'm meeting her tomorrow. Wonderful. I'm meeting her usually with another uh, author, a very famous uh, Algerian author who lives in Slovenia. He married to Slovenia, uh, Said Kaledi. No, Kaledi. Um, it's a bit different. I'm sorry. Uh, Said. I have the book downstairs now. Anyway, so we are meeting the three of us. So he helps sometimes with translation and I'm trying to meet them once a week so that she's not neglected. You know, she's not just oh, stranded in Ljubljana. Yeah. Um, uh, but I wanted to say something else. Um, uh, you were, what's my hopes for the future? So the near future, no war. <laughs> yes. The further future, we should, we should realize how to help our planet survive because without it, we won't survive. <laughs> I don't know, there are, so far we haven't found another earth to go to and uh, to pollute for the next uh, couple of thousands years there. So we have to find solutions here. And I think everybody can do a, a little bit, can think about it. When we, you know, this year you were quite, I remember your reaction. Our Penn Center wrote a little, um, how shall I say, um, letter to all of the Penn Centers and um, the, the writers, my colleagues, they say in this letter, we should not be just, uh, Penn members should not just protect freedom of speech and writing. We should also protect our planet. We should also think about including the uh, environmental agenda, the, 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 the future, I mean, uh, into our manifestos, into our activism. Actually, the Blade Manifesto of Writers for Peace has a little bit of in environment in it, has one, one uh, little paragraph saying that the that it is unethical and wrong to exploit the natural resources beyond limits because it creates hungers, it, uh, hunger, it creates uh, problems, migrations, and then nobody's happy. I mean, you, nobody wants to leave home just because he must, because he cannot survive there. It's, uh, yeah. So these are my hopes. <laughs> Wonderful. That we see these problems and solve them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, here, a little comma, not a full stop, but a little comma, hoping to go on uh, 
in the near future. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for inviting me, Tariq. Uh, that was a really an honor, as I said, <laughs> well, to speak to you I'm publicly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good. Uh, we are together. I enjoy saying this. Uh, we are together. When we yes, are we, we, we are together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you for hosting uh, me or who, all the viewers uh, who will be watching this uh, episode of Earth Civilization uh, Dialogues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. See you soon. <laughs> See you. Bye bye.